All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. Ann Ho, who's going to be competing at Rough 42 over at the Celebrity Theater in downtown Phoenix, Arizona on July 31st. She's going to be defending. This is the reigning defending champion of the flyweight division over at Rough. He's going to be defending once again uh, against uh, Acing Liberat. So if I said that right, we'll just roll with that. But anyway, this isn't his interview. This is an host interview. Now, look, you're coming off a decision victory over Terrence Saturn. Now, I don't know about you, but the promotion is making it exceedingly more difficult to pronounce your opponent's names. Now, I don't know if that's a trend, but I can tell you this. You, you handle your business and and you defend your title once again and and now it's up for grabs here at rough 42 uh I, I'm, I'm assuming here that we're pretty close to going professional yep uh so we we were actually i was actually planning on going professional after that last fight but uh during during the weight cut i wasn't professional about it so i kind of like it was hard for me. It, it was hard, a little bit hard for me to cut the weight just because I was doing it on my own, and I don't have much experience like uh, weight cutting. So uh, that's why that's why I wanted to take another amateur fight to make sure like I'm doing it like professionally before I turn professional. You know what I mean? So to fix that problem, uh, I'm, right now I'm working with uh, with Rob over at Ancient Nutrition. He's been helping me. Throughout camp, like uh, he he gave me this app that I download on my phone. It gives me like all the meals that I need, like uh, at the exact time, you know. So it's been great. Yeah, I've been eating like super good, and I just been losing weight. Well, it's a it's a process, and it's good to na- nail these things down uh, in your amateur career because you definitely don't want to go pro and then have these mishaps because. Then you're losing uh, respect to your peers. You're losing uh, cash, cash out of uh, your paycheck. So if there's a time for these things to happen, it's while you're an amateur and you're still young, you're still growing and you're still learning. And the fact that you're taking these mishaps and, and learning from them, it, it, it shows a lot, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you know, I uh, my last fight, I had to give up like 60 percent of my bone uh, of my money. Like, uh, after the fight, I was like, man, how am I going to pay for this Korean barbecue? You know, <laughs> I like, I like, I like, uh, I like winning more, uh, most of the money and, you know, all of my money just go towards food. That's it. Well, uh, this time around, uh, now that things are, are more dialed in and, and you have help, uh, cause nutrition and lo- losing and cutting weight, it's not simple. For anybody who's ever done it in their life, they know it's difficult, especially to do on your own. And those that don't cut weight, yeah, shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear anything out of your mouth about any fighter ever missing weight. If you've never cut weight in your life, shut up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's just how I process, it. man. It's a super hard process. Like that's almost like another another fight that you have to fight before the actual fight, you know? You gotta be really dedicated. That's why. That's why I, I had to. I had to just reach out, you know, because I knew that I really didn't know much about like the science behind it, you know. There's there are people that are pretty good at uh, like nu- nutrition and they study it, you know, and they know like the ins and out of it. And so now that I'm reaching out, I'm learning a lot more, you know. Well, and like I said, eventually you'll you'll find a a plan that's gonna work every single time. And then you could stick to it religiously, and then you don't even have to worry about the weight cuts. They'll just become, you know, uh, synonymous with you winning. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it happened during the amateur career, which isn't that bad. Um, you know, if you fix it, uh, come the 30th, everybody will find out. And then uh, on 31st, you know, your boy here and uh, my partner Ed West uh, at the commentary booth are going to get to call you a fight. Now, talk to me about Asin. What does this guy do well that we got to pay attention to, man? Um, I feel like overall he's a – I feel like I match up pretty good against him. He He's an undefeated fighter, 4-0. and I'm 6-0. and And uh, I feel like I, I could outstrike him. I could 
I'll grapple him. And uh, I feel like the only thing that he got on me is really his strength because I, I was watching some of his fight and he looks like a pretty dense guy. And you know, like uh, strength, strength actually matters in fighting. So, you know, like, uh, yeah. Well, one way you can counter uh, strength is with technique. Exactly, yeah. Your technique is better than him. He could be, a, you know, the strongest man in the world. I mean, it, it won't matter come fight night. So, and he's also got to suck down and get to 25 as well. And uh, once again, the Ruff is doing a fucking amazing job making sure you're not getting easy fights, man. They have put you in there with some, some beasts, uh, and you got another undefeated guy on your hands. This is twice in a row uh, that you're fighting the best uh, – flyweights around this is uh incredible what the promotion has been able to do for you and they're definitely not giving you any easy fights so talk to me about you know uh this is undefeated versus undefeated you know so one of you guys has to lose one of you guys is no longer going to be undefeated after the 31st so what what kind of uh preparations uh have you done to maintain that O for this one you know uh um I, I look at this fight just another day in the office for me, you know. Over here at the MMA lab, I get to train with, like, the best of the best, you know. My tr my training partner for most of my cage round is Casey Kenny. As you know, he's he's a really good UFC fighter. He's uh, top 10 right now, I think. And, um, yeah, man, I, I don't think I don't think there's going to be anything that's going to surprise me. Like, I, I, I feel like I've seen I've seen everything, but I'm, I'm still – I still have to uh, to dial down and you know like give him some of the benefits just so he does just just so I, I could see everything that is coming you know I don't outlook I don't I don't out uh, outlook anything. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Now with all these killers in your corner and with the lab having so many fighters uh, fighting on this card, I've interviewed quite a few of all, of you guys already, and of course we got Nixon later today. So talk to me about the vibe in the gym. I mean, this is basically another lab card, if you will. Uh, Ruff seems to keep you guys pretty busy. So inside the gym, you guys are all cutting weight together. You guys are all peaking at the same. So, so talk to me about that. Oh, man, the vibe here is, is amazing, man. Like everyone else, everyone here is just helping each other out. Like we're like a family, you know, like when we have a fight together, it's almost like we're we're getting ready to go for a battle, you know, ready to go to war. And so we, we just, you know, do everything that we can, like beating each other up, like as much as we can to be good enough to go in there and not be surprised by anybody else. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, like I said, the uh, experience factor and the knowledge factor at your guys' gym, I mean, it goes all the way back to the early WEC days. You know what I mean? This isn't a gym that just popped up overnight. This is a gym that's been around. It's got vets. It's got up and comers. It's got it's a, a gym full of killers. And, uh, you know, it's it's pretty awesome to see that they are still able to keep up the output of breeding guys such as yourself, girls such as uh, Leslie and, and still keep up the pace of, you know, just turning out really good fighters from the same gym, uh, you know, year after year. Yeah, I agree, man. Uh, like. Every day, every day of practice, there is no easy rounds. Like everyone here is very good at what they do. If they're not good, if they're not well rounded on the striking realms, they're the best on the on the ground, on the jujitsu or in wrestling. If they're not that good at wrestling, they're the best striker that you could even see. And you know, they, I feel like that's what that's what really helped me, like becoming a, a better fighter and taking it to another level. And that's that's why I feel very confident going into this fight, man. I feel like there's nothing that's gonna surprise me. And that's how you should feel going into uh, the biggest fight of your life here. I mean, this is a title fight, which is nothing new to you, but this is potentially the send off uh, to the pros. You know what I mean? This this fight is going to get you uh, one step closer uh, to where you want to be with the victory. So I'm sure the coaches are making sure that you're 100 percent dialed in and ready to go. Uh, focused and just you know ready to get uh, that that last W on the amateur scene uh, before you get to pros. Now, when you get to pros, it's a, it's a little bit different. Not a whole lot different. I mean, the rounds are longer, 
right? So uh, the cardio is uh, definitely going to be tested there. But now, like the wins and losses, being undefeated is awesome, right? But as a pro, like those uh, those L's, they really count against you. So with that in mind, are there any nerves or, or worries uh, about going pro since you've been so successful uh, as an amateur? Um, I, I don't think there's anything going to be that much difference. Like, uh, all, I, all I do is just the first thing I wake up and think about is I got to go to the gym, you know? Like this is this is like my life. Like I don't I don't work. I don't do anything else except for training. I eat, I sleep, I breathe, training. You know, so I'm I'm like here 24 seven trying to master my craft. I I I I'm pretty sure I've seen almost everything. You know, or if not everything, I've seen I've trained with the best. I train with the best of the best, and you know I I handle myself pretty well. And uh, most of my rounds, like I'm doing now, is more is more of like a five rounds too because because we have Casey Kenny coming up, uh, he has his fight coming up, so I have to, I have to uh, keep up with his pace at the five rounds. You know, I feel, I feel like, I feel like I handle myself pretty well as, as well with the pros guys. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's nothing gonna be like uh, out of the extraordinary for me. I feel like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in strong, and I'm gonna win every fight, and I'm gonna go to the UFC, and I'm gonna win the title. I like it, man. I like the confidence and, you know, uh, the, the, what, the biggest change uh, when you go to pros is uh, some cash monies. Right. So now you're getting paid uh, as a professional athlete. Um, the sponsors tend to come on a, a, a little bit harder and heavier or, you know, from the woodwork uh, as soon as you go pro. So there's a lot of uh, a financial gain uh, there as well. So, and again, your skill set, uh, when, when you do uh, make the jump, I think it's going to translate very well. You got one of the best gyms in the world uh, behind you. Now, with this fight being a uh, little uh, over a week away, we got to talk about after the fight. Okay. Now, you know why. You know what I'm going to ask here. Okay. When the fucking ref raises your hand, says winner and ho. I want to know how we celebrate. Come on, lay it on. Hey, I'm telling you, bro. I have a, a complicated relationship with Korean barbecue, man. I, <laughs> oh, that, that's my spot, bro. I got to go to Korean barbecue right after, you know, like that's every fight. I just got to go to Korean barbecue. It's so good. Like $25 for two hours of just eating. Oh, man, that, that's all I need right there after after going in there and fighting. Okay. Okay. I, I, I think I can get down with that, especially if it's, you know, only 25 bucks and oh, yeah. yeah, man, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> but uh, we can't go there just yet because we have a fight ahead of us. Now, do you have uh, any type of prediction or, you know, any thoughts on, on the fight and how it's going to play out? Um, this time, man, I, I'm always looking when I go fight. I always look for the finish, you know. If, if it's not if it's not me kicking him in the head and putting him to sleep, I'm looking to rip his arm off, you know, rip his ankle off, rip rip his head off. And and if that doesn't work, then we're gonna go to a war, you know. I'm I'm more than happy to go to a three three or five round wars with anybody in the world. I feel like I'm that good, you know. Absolutely. And uh, the support coming in for this one, again, uh, with this being a, a special bout in your career, this not only is it just another title fight, not only is the other guy undefeated again, but I mean, this is potentially the last time that we're going to see you, uh, you know, in three, three minutes. You know what I mean? This is the last time that we're going to see you as as the young man uh, defending an amateur title to a grown ass man fighting real fuckers, you know what I mean? So, like, whoa, 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 how's everybody feeling about this whole thing? Um, everyone in my corner feel pretty great, man. Like, I'm not trying to brag, but I'm, I'm pretty good, you know? Like, uh, I, 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 fight, I fight and train with grown men, like, every single day. Who, who, like, I, I train with grown men in jujitsu regular classes. I train with grown men in wrestling practice. I train with grown men in, in sparring, you know? Like, everybody I... I'm literally the youngest person in this gym, so it that pressure is not really like it's not really 
getting on to me, you know, because I'm, I'm used to it. I'm always the youngest one and I'm always the hardest working one, you know. I'm used Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. And now we get to uh, give you a push uh, after this one as uh, a flyweight as a pro, which I, I mean, I think you can go very far in this division. Um, and, uh, especially if the weight stays on, on par with, you know, the dialing it in and, you know, everything else, I think you could be a really, really big problem for a lot of these guys out here that are, uh, professional at 125 pounds. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't, right now I, in my head, I'm think I, I think I'm, I'm going to be the best as well. I don't really see any, you know, like I I'm planning on, on beating everybody. I'm planning on finishing everybody. But right now, you know, I gotta dial it into the to this fight. You know, I, I don't like thinking about the future a little a little bit too far. I like to stay right here and right now. You know, whatever comes next is gonna come next. And yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming to get. I'm coming to get what I'm dreaming for. You know, coming to change my family's life. You know, this is all I have. You know, like I dedicate so much time and so everything. I dedicate it and I sacrifice so much for this. Every single day, every single every single second, I'm always in the gym, man. I don't, my relationship with my with my family is not that great because I'm always here, you know. I'm always training, always trying to be the best version of myself. And you know, like winning is all that's all I'm looking for, man. Okay, well, uh, like I said, all the hard work is pretty much behind us. We're we're a week and a half, a little less than that, actually, from the fight itself. So uh, I'm very excited to be on the call again. Uh, I get to call your fight uh, again. Another undefeated guy, uh, Rough 42, over at the Celebrity Theater in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, on July 31st. This is the champ right here. This is the guy. This is not the guy that has to call people out, but people got to call him out. Okay, he's the one with the target on his back. He's the one that holds the threat. You know what I mean? He's the one that all these guys are coming after, and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited to watch you fight again, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to put on a show. You know, every time I go out there, it's go time, baby. I don't I don't hold anything back. I'm putting everything in the line, and we're going to go. Let's go. July 31st, everybody, get your tickets. Make sure you put my promotion code, A-H-O. I want to shout out to all of my sponsors, Cryo Tempe, The Family Barbershop, uh, Ancient Nutrition. Let's go, baby. <laughs> All right. And, and before I do let you go, uh, I would also like to, uh, to ask, uh, wh what are the plans for immediately following the, the victory meet? Are we going to go on vacation? Are, are we going to go and uh, celebrate a little bit? Uh, I think I think I'm going to take at least a week off just to smell the roses. You know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm usually like I, I work pretty hard. Like I'm usually here like every day. So. Sometimes, you know, you got you just got to sit back and enjoy the journey, you know. I'm I'm always on the grind so I'm I'm just looking to enjoy the journey a little bit more this time before I, before it gets serious. Okay. All right, man. Well, again, July 31st, rough 42, uh, a title fight between two undefeated flyweights here. Uh this man right here is the champ. And where can they follow the champ on social media? You can follow me on Instagram. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm most active on. It's at Antoine Ho underscore MMA. It's uh, spelled A-N-T-U-A-N-H-O underscore MMA. Perfect, my man. Well, in about a week and a half or a little under, I'll be shaking your head when you get off the scale, and then the following night I get to call the action. So I can't wait. I'm stoked. We'll see you then, my man. Thank you. Good talking to you, brother. Yes, sir.